Good. As good as we're going to get. How's everybody doing? Are you surviving? We're a third mm -hmm. of the way through the semester. Yay. Yay us. <laughs> All right, um, let, me, let me pull up the course outline, but not there. Too many windows. All right. Here we go. All right, now let me share desktop, share. Can you see the course outline? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so this week we are finally finishing up the role of money in the financial system. And then we're gonna jump right into a first look at macroeconomics. Um, this is a kind of a high level um, overview of what the rest of the course is going to look like. Um, if you go to the study plan, you can see um, all of what I would say in class. So all of my lecture notes are there. It's not very long, um, but it gives you a sense of where we're going to go from here. And then next week, we're going to um, jump into how does one tell the state of the economy. All right. Anybody have questions about where we are or what we're going to be doing? Yeah, so this week we're just doing the study plan and then we're reading the, the Nobel Committee honors. Sure. Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, so let me say what I wanted to say about the role of money in the financial system. Um, we can talk a little bit about the, the um, online discussion. Um, mm -hmm because that's kind of how I framed what I was going to say. Um, okay, the, question, the point of the online discussion was to get you guys to think a little more about what money actually is. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully the article kind of pushed your thinking about that. Um, we know that theoretically money has four functions two of which are critical and two of which are uh, less so. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing that makes money money is that it's got to be generally accepted as a means of payment. Um, the second thing is that, that it has to serve as a store of value. It has to be valuable in and of itself. Um, there are two broad kinds of money they are commodity money and fiat money. Commodity money is an item that has value aside from being money. So in the Radford article, for example, cigarettes were money and they were a commodity money, okay? They had money, they had value as cigarettes aside from being used as money. Um, fiat money is symbolic money, meaning, um, it doesn't have any other value besides being money. In other words, the value of a $100 bill, if you're not using it as money, is pretty much nothing, okay? Typically, when money evolves or money is, uh, springs up in a situation, it starts off as commodity money. Um, why do you suppose that is? The silence is awesome. So commodity money is the stuff that like has another use. So yeah. I think in order to have fiat money, you would have to have a well-established like economic system first. Yeah, pretty much. So why, but why does money start as commodity money rather than fiat money? I don't know if this is the right answer, but like you, it's easier to trade like find things and trade things that would have another purpose. Yes. Like creating the money. Yeah. For something to be generally accepted, it helps if it has value. Okay. Um, and fiat money only has value because we all think it does. 
right? But commodity money has value separate from that. So when money springs up in a situation, usually it starts as some sort form of commodity money. Now, commodity money has its own prob problems. Um, for something like gold, gold is actually really heavy. Um, uh, money, uh, paper money is much easier to carry around. Um, so typically over time, we evolve to using fiat money because it's more convenient, okay? Um, all right, so back to the definitions, um, means of payment and store of value. There are two other uh, functions of money. Um, the last one, I'm doing them in reverse order. The last one is called a standard of deferred payment. It means money is something that you can pay your debts in. Um, oftentimes that is left off the list because if something is generally accepted as a means of payment and it has value, then almost certainly it can be used uh, as a standard of deferred payment. So in a sense, that's redundant, okay? Um, the last uh, function of money is money is a unit of account. Um, this is a really subtle idea, um, but it's fairly important. Um, unit of account means how we measure economic activities. Um, we measure income in terms of money. We measure sales in terms of money. Um, we measure production in terms of money. Um, so without a unit of account, it would make measuring things a lot harder. Um, however, you only need one unit of account. Once you have one unit of account, you can have many other forms of money that aren't that don't serve as units of account. Let me give you an example that will show you how kind of subtle this idea is. Um, the unit of account that we use is a one is one dollar, right? Everything is measured in terms of one dollar. We could use five dollar bills instead of one dollar, but we don't because one dollar just is where we started. We could also use quarters if we wanted to. We could you could measure it, your income in terms of quarters and instead of in terms of dollars, it, automatically you would feel richer because you have, you know, you, you earned more quarters than you did dollars. Okay. But again, the point is you just need one. Once there's one out there, you don't need any more of them. Hey, Jeremiah, you're back. I'm back. Awesome. All right. So, um, deli dollars. Were deli dollars alone? Or were they money? And why, what do you think about that? I'm not just call, uh, talking to you, Jeremiah, anybody. <laughs> were they alone? Um, or I thought deli dollars were alone because um, he was like selling them so that he could get money and then like they would go back out. But, but from the buyer's perspective, they were paying $9 today and getting $10 worth of food in the future. So, so it was just like a loan from anybody else. There was that extra dollar interest, basically. So, so for sure, deli dollars were a loan from Frank's perspective, but that alone doesn't make them money in the society, in the, in the, in the town of Great Barrington. Um, what do you think about that? In your opinion, were Delhi dollars money or not? And why? Rachel, what do you think? I think they were money. It is money, not they were. Because yeah. it, um, you're exchanging something for like you're exchanging money for something for good and you're paying interest, so. But that just makes them alone, doesn't it? What's necessary for them to be money? Were they, did, were they a store of value? They, didn't they store value in sense of? Yes. No, uh, absolutely they did. So. 
that would make it money. Well, no? not necessarily. Not because necessarily. My, my car stores value, okay. but my car is not money. So this question hinges on the first characters, characteristic of money, the general acceptability as a means of payment. Okay. That mm -hmm. has to go beyond Frank and the people that loaned him the money. Okay. So is there any evidence that Delhi dollars were circulated more widely than that? No. Oh. I'm going to give you credit for speaking up. <laughs> Coriel, do you have an opinion? I mean, is there like an in-between stage of where it's because it's sort of a loan on one side and it's also money on another side? Is there okay. like an Where is it the money? What side is the money on? The side is the money for the buyer. You mean the people that lent yes. money? Yes. Okay. yes. That's not it. That's, oh, that's not something it. else. Okay. Hannah, any ideas? Um, I don't really know. Like, I agree with Rachel, but then at the same time, I can see how it's not money. Okay, what's your argument for why it's not money? Because it's, okay, it's not like, hold on, I think I wrote it down. Even better. If I can find it. Hey, Catherine, I didn't notice you before. Hey, I just got here. <laughs> Little well, late. that's why then, huh? <laughs> and we have the Courtney twins. I saw you laughing there. Okay, I can't find it, but I don't know. I just think it's not because it has value, but it doesn't have monetary value. Okay. What would give something monetary value? Um, hold on. I don't remember. Would you consider it not money because at some point, like, people won't accept it? Like, not everyone accepts it? Well, really, the question is, did anyone accept it? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the answer? I think it's not. Because I don't think the people accepted it. Courtney, what about you? Yeah, your turn. <laughs> um, I think it is, in a way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> well, come on now. There's only 10 of us here. It, it won't be that embarrassing. But maybe everyone else like thinks it's not money, so. <laughs> so you could be right, and they could all be wrong. That's uh, not just possible. <laughs> okay, I think it's money. Mm -hmm. I think it's money, so that makes two of us. Wow. Mm. Go, Courtney. It makes it three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, why do you think it's money? <laughs> Shouldn't have said anything. Um, I mean, I don't, I feel like it's money. It, I don't, because they're using it there at the place. I feel like it's being, it's an exchange. I feel like it might be like commodity it's money. Kind of you're there. saying. Yeah, at, I think that, okay. like they're using that's it. That's not enough. That's just that could be uh, could be seen as just getting paying back the loan. Mm. Okay, so then what's the answer? Is it money or <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I, to the point, girl? I love it. I like this article is because there is no clear answer. Oh, okay. okay. But I think it's money because according to the article, Delhi dollars sh started showing up in other. <laughs> people were spending them, right? So that's that acceptability as a means of payment. You can argue that they weren't generally accepted because they weren't used by everybody and they weren't used everywhere. But at least they were used some places. 
And so to me, that's enough to be considered kind of like money. Do you think that um, deli dollars would have been accepted as a means of payment in Boston or New York? No. Why not? I think because it was such a small um, area that was kind of focusing on it, since it was like specifically for a restaurant. I think if it became like a larger like corporation or something like that was more widespread, that could have possibly done it. So why, why did it work in Great Barrington? I think it's because it's like the community kind of coming together to help um, build something back up that they knew they couldn't, so that they knew that like somebody couldn't. This was just yeah. charity? <laughs> this was just charity? Not particularly. Like, I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. If somebody spent, if somebody lent Frank $9 and he got the deli dollar and then he turned around and spent it on groceries say the person accepting the money for groceries was not doing Frank any favors. Why was he willing to do that? Did you repeat that? Why would somebody other, why would somebody else, why would some third party accept deli dollars in exchange for some transaction? Okay, there's something going on there that you guys haven't jumped on yet. You're, you're all around the edges of it. Because they hold value? Say that again? Because they hold value? Well, why? how do you know? It's just well, a piece guess, of paper. If yeah. people really want the deli, they'll, they they'll, they'll go there. They trusted Frank. They trusted Frank and they believed that they could take that piece of paper and turn it in for, food, for, for, for a restaurant meal, right? So it has to do with having faith in the guy who issued the paper. And that's why going to Boston or New York simply wouldn't work because nobody knows Frank there. They would think you were pulling some scam or something. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Money isn't generally universal, right? You can't, you know, if, if a Canadian person came to Fredericksburg and tried to buy lunch with Canadian dollars, it probably wouldn't be accepted. Why not? Because we don't have Canadian currency here. Well, we, we don't accept Canadian currency because it's too far away from Canada. Okay. So there, so there is a geographic area. Think about checks, right? Uh, well, okay. You guys probably don't even know what a check is. <laughs> you, probably, you probably think um, yeah, it's the country next to Slovakia, which it is. But that's a different context, okay? Um, so, so if you go on a trip to Oklahoma and you try to pay for something with a check on a Fredericksburg bank, is that going to work for you? No. No. Probably not because they don't even know where Fredericksburg is. They don't know who Mary Washington was. It's a big mystery to them. It's too far away for them to accept that as a, as a, as a form of money. Now they'll, they'll accept cash mm -hmm. because they're part of the United States, right? So money is really kind of interesting because it's really dependent on people trusting it. Okay, any questions before we move on? Okay, money, money literally is the grease in the economic system. We've talked before about how markets promote efficiency because markets move items um, from people who value them <clears throat> less to people who value them more. Think back about the Radford article, right? The, the economics of the POW camp. The French traded their tea for coffee from the English and each side was better off because they each got what they wanted, right? So trading promotes efficiency, markets promote efficiency. Money makes markets work even better because any possible mutually beneficial transaction 
will go through because people accept money as a means of payment, okay? So to put it a little bit differently, without money, we would have fewer transactions, we would have less economic activity, and we would literally have a lower standard of living. All right, does that make sense? Humor me, it's been a long day. Just <laughs> on and okay, some of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Maeve, you're inside again. What do you think it is, fall? No, it doesn't feel like it outside. No. <laughs> Next I, few days, hopefully. I, I still miss seeing you in your car. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll make that back, happen this semester. Back in the back seat that makes it look like you're a homeless woman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, where do banking and financial markets come into the story? Because they're important, too. Um. What is the function of financial markets? What, what gets bought and sold in financial markets and why is that important? Like Anybody? stock and there are where people put their money. Well, financial markets are where people put their money and yep. it's it traded into stock, right? Okay, and what's the whole point of this? To save. Okay, yes and well, yes, it is, but that's only part of the story, okay? We've got people and businesses and governments who are currently trying to save, which means they are currently earning more than they're consuming, right? Yeah. We have other economic agents who are trying to borrow, right? Yeah. So the whole point of, fi of financial markets, the whole point of the financial system is to channel savings from lenders to borrowers. Okay, and that's really hard to overstate. Think about it this way. You're a business, okay? Um, you're, su suppose you're starting a new business. Um, you, you, you need labor, you need capital to produce your product. The labor isn't so hard, you can hire people and you can promise to pay them after two weeks. The capital is more complicated because we're talking about real economic capital here. We're talking about tools and equipment, the factory, the office building, right? Those things can be really, really pricey. So just like you don't have enough money in your checking account probably to buy a new house, businesses don't have enough cash to buy a new factory. So what do they do? They borrow. They borrow the money, right? They borrow the money, okay? So what they do is they go to financial markets and they say, hey, we need to borrow money. Who's got money to lend, right? And so through that process, and obviously it's more sophisticated than just what I described, um, you know, businesses who need to grow can get the money, the savings they need to, to, to do that. And and students who need the money to go to college can get a college loan for the same productive kind of purpose, okay? If we didn't have financial markets, then all of that would be a lot harder to accomplish. Businesses would, wouldn't be able to grow and a lot of people wouldn't be able to go to college because they could never come up with the money, okay? Just think about home mortgages. I mean, this is kind of an aside. Imagine if there were no mortgage loans available, then people would have to save up the whole purchase price of a house before they could buy it and move into it. Mortgages are so much more convenient because they let us move into the house now and then come up with the money over the next 30 years, right? That's all, um, a mortgage loan is a loan. Okay, you guys are looking like you're dragging here a little bit. So let me, let me try to finish this off relatively quickly. Okay, let's think about banks, okay? Let's think about what banks do. If you had to define the two most important things that banks do, what would you say? They hold money. They accept people's deposits, yes. What's the other thing? They loan. 
they make loans, right? So if it's a financial business and it accepts deposits and it makes loans, then we're gonna call it a bank. They may call themselves a credit union, that's okay, they're doing the same thing. Okay. How do banks do their work? You deposit money in the bank, they take a small fraction of that money, they put it in the vault, that's called reserves. They take the rest of that money and they loan it out. Okay, so your money is going to work. It's going to work for the bank and it's going to work for you. Because in return for that, the, ba the bank earns income and you earn interest on your deposit. Okay, but this is really kind of an interesting and um, fragile situation, okay? Because at any point in time, if enough people try to withdraw money from their accounts, the bank literally doesn't have the money because it's all been lent out. That doesn't mean you've made a bad investment. That just means the bank is in a situation uh, where it's illiquid, right? It, has, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have the cash to enable people to make withdrawals. Okay. Now, banks are, you know, that's a problem for the bank. It's embarrassing. Um, you know, it could get them into legal problems because legally they're obligated to be able to give you your money when you come and ask for it, okay? So banks get pretty good at estimating how much money they're going to need to have in reserve, okay? They can still make mistakes. So suppose, suppose you had 10% of your total deposits on reserve in the vault and 11% of your depositors came to pull out their money you would have a problem there, right? How do you, how would a bank avoid that kind of problem? It's a really easy answer. What you would do is you would hold more money as reserves. So maybe you hold 12%, right? So if 11% of, of your depositors come and try to pull out their money, you've got it covered and you've got a little bit of a cushion, 1% 1, 1 more. But there's a problem here. The safer you want to be, the more reserves you hold, what's the opportunity cost of holding reserves? The interest that you would get from the loans that you give out? Just that you don't get, right? Right, that's right, yeah. Because reserves don't earn you any income. They're just sitting in the vault. Right? So the safer you want to be, the less money you're going to earn, okay? And which means the less money that we're going to get on our, on our interest. In, in the deposits. So banks constantly have to consider, you know, do I want to make more loans? Do I want to hold more reserves? Okay. Um, and so it turns out that, that the amount of bank reserves varies. It's not the same always. Okay. So when banks get nervous, they make fewer loans, they hold more reserves. What do banks do during recessions, for example? What did banks do in the Spectre article? They don't give out as many loans. They stopped making loans entirely, yeah. So the good news is they were as safe as they could be. The bad news is no one could borrow from them. All right. What about a business that needs to make payroll next week and because of the recession hasn't generated enough revenue to make their payroll? What would they ordinarily do? They would go to their bank and say, we need a short-term loan. But if the bank isn't willing to lend them the money, maybe they go out of business, okay? So when banks are too conservative, that has an impact on, on business, and that's not a good thing, right? That's part of the reason why businesses fail during recessions is not that they made bad management decisions, it's that banks won't lend them the money they need to tide them over, okay? Um, is there a set Num like amount for how much banks can keep in the reserve? They can keep from zero to 100%. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a little, it's a, um, there is a better answer than that. Okay. Aside from everything that we've said so far, mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve requires that banks hold a minimum percentage as reserves. And we're going to talk about that in about a month. Okay. okay. Um, but the point here is that banks have a real reason to hold reserves. It's not just because the government tells them they have to, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they owe the money to their customers. 
All right. Any questions? Some, some people um, said they wanted me to talk about M1 and M2 and M3. Do you guys remember, remember those things from the modules? Yeah. They're really very easy. Okay, here, here's the point. Um, at the microeconomic level, money is used for transaction purposes. We know that, right? Either for consumption or investment. At the macroeconomic level, the volume of transactions going on in the economy determines the level of economic activity. The more buying and selling, the more GDP, the more jobs. The less buying and selling, the less GDP, the less jobs, okay? So the volume of transactions in an economy is really, really important. It turns out that the supply of money is an important determinant of overall economic activity, okay? Money makes the economy work better, but you could have too much money, you could also have too little money, okay? So it's important that we figure out exactly what counts, okay? The problem is there's no, there's no unambiguous answer about what money is. However, there are at least three generally accepted definitions of what should be included in money, and they're called M1, M2, and M3, right? There are three different definitions of the money supply. M1 is the simplest one. It's currency plus checkable deposits, per, currency plus checking account balances. Okay, the idea here is that people use currency to buy things, people use checks to buy things, people use ATM cards that they use to draw off, um, to draw on, on bank accounts. All of those things really are money, so we're gonna count all of those things. Okay, so that's the narrowest definition of the money supply. Some economists think that M1 is too, too narrow, too conservative. And they think that there are other liquid assets which are close enough substitutes that they ought to be counted too. That's where M2 comes in. M2 is a slightly larger definition of money. So it includes everything that's in M1 plus savings accounts, um, plus what are called small denomination time deposits. Small in the financial world means under $100,000. So that certainly covers mine. Um, and then things like money market funds and money market accounts. Um, all of those things are included in M2. And then finally, M3 is an even bigger category that includes things that are even less liquid than the things in M2. So M3 is M2 plus large denomination time deposits and a, uh, a number of other kind of technical things. But basically the idea is, is we have to work with some definition of the money supply. We've got three that people commonly use. And when you go from M1 to M2 to M3, you're getting two larger and larger numbers of money supply. That's it in a nutshell, okay? Um, in general, I use M1 unless I have a reason to talk about other things. So when I'm talking about M1, I mean, when I'm talking about the supply of money, and we will be doing a lot of talking about the supply of money, um, I'm talking about currency plus checking account balances. Even if you never write a check and you only use your debit card. All right. Some of us do have checks, Professor. Awesome. <laughs> Happy to hear it. You're making I found my checks the other day. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me feel young, Jeremiah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's all I've got to say. Do you guys have any other questions? My only question, can you like just quickly explain liquidity and like like do like their plastic money, so like debit card, does that like factor in? Because they didn't really make that segue. Okay. Liquidity is a property of all assets. Some assets are more liquid, some assets are less liquid. Liquidity just means how quickly and easily can something be converted to a means of payment without losing a lot of value, okay? okay. So, so going back to our definition of the money supply, you could line up all the different types of assets from least liquid to most liquid. At some point you draw the line and you say everything to the right is sufficiently liquid that we're gonna count it as money. 
everything to the left, we're not going to count as money. So things like real estate, real estate have, ha, has a lot of value, but you can't use it to buy your lunch, right? Um, so stocks and bonds are relatively liquid. You can sell them with a phone call. You can, um, when, you, when you sell stocks or bonds, you get the money within three business days. But again, that's not quick enough for you to buy your lunch with it, right? Um, is currency, how liquid is currency? This is a trick question. Okay, Maeve, you, you brought it up. How liquid is currency? Well, if you have cash, yes. how liquid highly, is cash? yeah, it would be highly liquid because you can give it right then and there. That's a good answer. It's not the best answer. Okay. <laughs> What's the best answer? Isn't it just very liquid? Like currency it is. But it's not just very liquid. It is as liquid as it gets because it's already a means of payment. You don't have to convert it to anything. That's the trick. No. <laughs> So, so uh, did I, did I crush you, Maeve, there? No, I, I think I got it. So like, so if I pay for something with a debit card, then yep. it's so because it's not like a change of physical money. It doesn't have to be. Okay. okay. So, so debit cards have kind of revolutionized what we think of as money, because if you have a debit card tied to your savings account, then it's as pretty much as good as cash almost, anybody that accepts a debit card, right? Whereas before, to get money out of a savings account, you would physically have to go to the bank and get the money out, right? So savings accounts really are liquid. Yeah, awesome. Does that help, Maeve? Yeah, that clears it up. Other questions? Are the test corrections, are we supposed to meet with you by this Thursday for that? Uh, more or less, yes. Okay, because I thought I got, on the announcements it said like three. I know, I know, I, know. Okay. I, got, I got your email. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you. Okay. Um, I had 20 appointments today. Oh, okay, gotcha. I'm kind of burned out at the moment, but I will get back to you guys by tomorrow. Okay. Did you get my email? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yeah. No, I got your email. Okay, thank uh, you. Some of you, some of you actually were those appointments today. So uh, I'm going to throw you guys under the bus. I just won't tell you who, who they are. So, so yes, that's, that's a good question. Any other questions? Oh, yes, question. You may have already answered that before I got here. I can just go back and watch it if so. But with the discussions, um, were those due by... Day or are they by today. Like, yeah. By today. Okay. So yeah. as long as we posted something. Uh well, hopefully you posted more than one thing because I posted two. I could post a third one. It was it was, you know, kind of a kind of a uh an interesting and hard to sort out discussion. If you don't believe me, ask Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like he was not the kind only of one today who asked me, Well, what is the answer? You know? So. Well, you just need to like Tell us, and then it'll be good. But there, <laughs> there isn't an answer. What 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 you need to do is is decide for yourself. Think of the evidence and make a case for it one way or the other. I think you can argue either way. And the 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 point of the discussion was for me to understand that you understand what money actually is. If you say so. Oh come on now. I just like to know when I'm right. <laughs> me. <laughs> now, if, if that is if that is your goal in life, you're going to be disappointed. I have to say. Oh, I know. <laughs> a, there's a lot of gray in my world. That's all I can say. And and I hope I think Sarah's laughing with me instead of at me. So yeah, I'm laughing with you. You're good. <laughs> good. Good. All right. Other questions. Oh, I have one. Okay. Um, the T accounts. Yes. Hold on. If I if I'd wanted to use a lot of T accounts, I would have been an accountant. But anyway, go ahead. It's like uh, uh, sorry, I can't find it. No worries. A T account just lists your assets and your liabilities, and from a bank's point of view. 
our deposits are liabilities to the bank because they owe us. They have to pay us back. Okay, so it's not, so it's basically just in a table. Exactly. And okay. then so the bank takes that money. The, the cash that we deposit becomes an asset for them. Some of it they put in as reserves and the rest they give out as loans. Okay, that and makes that's sense. Kind of it in a nutshell. Got it. Good. Anybody else? How about those gnats? Yeah, I, that was crazy. All right, well, I guess we'll call it a night. Bye, Courtney. Courtney's. Bye, Professor Greenlaw. Yep. Have a good one. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.